Welcome to Our Jewish Roots with insightful Bible teaching from Israel by Dr. Jeffrey Seif. This week we look at legalism and eternal rewards on Sar Shalom, Prince of Peace. We're so glad you joined us today. I'm David Hart. I'm Kirsten Hart. I am Jeffrey Seif. And do you know that there's a correlation between the word disciple and discipline? Mm. Interior disciplines. We'll look at uh -oh. some of that today, yes? Where are you? Matthew 6? Is that where you're at? Well, Matthew chapter 6. That's it, right. Is there a theme today? That we do need to have a disciplined approach to life. And uh, more important than just disciplining ourselves isn't to go around and advertise, look how holy and pious and disciplined we are. It's, we want to have an internal locus of control with his discipline, with his focus, but not go around acting like we're the king of the universe. It's interesting because it's discipline with humility. There you go. And uh, we don't like that word humility very much anymore. No, that's what Do I was you know reaching what I mean? for. You said in two words what I, what I couldn't say correctly in three paragraphs. Oh, it okay. is right. Very Thank good. You. It is true. It's going to be a good to be, program. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> you should have been teaching, not me. But uh, it is true to mm -hmm. discipline and humility. It's, it's from Jesus. He taught about it right there in that Bible. He surely did. Yeah. And, you know, we could use a little bit of both, some discipline and some humility. What do you think? <laughs> Thank you for your teaching ahead of time. We appreciate it. Now let's go up to the Galilee. כאשר אתם צמים, אל תהלכו קודרים כמו הצבועים, המשנים את פניהם כדי להראות צמים לבני אדם. אמן, אני אומר לכם, שכרם איתם. אבל אתה... The Lord had made it quite clear. There is a place for fasting, but it is not in public, especially at the city gate. Disfiguring the face with ashes may be rewarded with attention, but the attention is the extent of the reward. When fasting, do so in secret, says the Lord, and your Father, who sees in secret, will reward you openly. Just to be sure, I looked at my driver's license the other day and looked at my date of birth. Being reminded that I'm 54 years old, it occurred to me that I didn't just start living. And one of the things that I've learned in 54 years of living is that things aren't always as they seem, and neither are people. There's this little thing called pretense. The, there's a word ostensibly, which means intended for show. There's the word pretense. That and the word pretend are cut from the same cloth and speak to how some people present themselves as being something when they're really not. We all know that it happens in the world at large, but isn't it rather bizarre, odd, that it actually happens in the church? People parade about to be a little more righteous, a little more holy than they really are. I'm not impressed by that. Jesus isn't impressed by that. He said as much when he warned against those that fast and they just make their face, they, they make themselves to look just a certain way so others round about can go, ah, oh, what, a, what, a, what a righteous person, what, what a holy person. Jesus says, you know, they have the reward by virtue of their so doing. Payday comes every moment. That is to say, what they're after is wanting to impress the world 
<laughs> and they get payment immediately for it because the world's impressed, or at least the shallow people in the world. If I understand the Lord correctly, better it is that we do things for Him, not in order to garner the attention round about. The truth of the matter is that when we fast, when we do deny ourselves, for Christ's sake, we have a way of cleaning ourselves out. Really, as you sit there right now, your body can be uh, pumped full of sodium from the Cokes you're drinking, from caffeine, from the coffee. The sugar can be having an effect on your mind, not just your body. There's so much junk in, and it affects not just the way we look, the way we feel, the way we think. Truth of the matter is we need to purge ourselves some stuff to get some new perspective, new ideas, new ways of thinking, new ways of feeling. Fasting has great value beyond the momentary value of impressing the world how righteous we are. The value of denial like this is that we can kind of get in touch with ourselves, get in touch with, with the Lord, get in touch with our body, and this pays great dividends with the passage of time. Oh, don't be a hypocrite, friend. Jesus said those that fast, they anoint themselves to impress others. They are, in effect, hypocrites in chapter 6, verse 18. The word hypocrite, as I mentioned in another segment in Hebrew, comes from the word for hyena. They make an absolute fool out of themselves. They, 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 they ruin the moment. They ruin others by going around trying to impress. Let me encourage you instead to place a personal premium on holiness, righteousness. Let me encourage you to absorb some spiritual disciplines, prayer, fasting, charity giving. There are different ways that different people can benefit for sacrificing themselves like this, never mind how others can derive some benefit from us. But let's remember, never, never, never do it for show. Let's give up uh, various pleasures so we can pursue God's treasures. אל תעצרו לכם אוצרות עלי אדמות. במקום שהאש והחלודה משחיתים והגנבים חופרים וחופרים. אבל תעצרו לכם אוצרות בשם. No one will notice, This treasure of mine will remain a secret forever. But not so, says the Lord. Lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven, where neither moth nor rust destroys, and where thieves do not break in and steal. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. I know some people, it's all about, quote, me and my money. And they love to behold it. They love to hold it, to seize it ever so close and hold it because they hold it so dearly. And they look, make sure no one sees. And they bury it. They hide it. Oh, they just feel so good to possess it. Jesus said, um, You know, we're better served to not want to hold on so tight to the money because it does have a way of getting away from us now, doesn't it? The Lord's saying, don't lay up for yourselves treasures on earth where uh, thieves break in and steal. In, in, in another vocation, I served as a police officer in a patrol division and had more than one occasion as a peace officer to deal with burglars in the middle of the night. And I can assure you that people can be very creative in the way they go after your assets. We've learned that now, haven't we, in our culture? Tragically, by the way, we've seen money just evaporate, horrible, through stealth, through intrigue. People work their way into our banks. Money just dissipates. It's horrible. Some have gone to jail. Some people have gotten away with it. Billions of dollars have just gotten away from us. Jesus said that we do well to invest money, not just look to seize it. Because you can't hold it forever anyway. 
never, 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 never in my life did I ever see a hearse making that final drive with a U-Haul in the back of it. The guy's just taking his treasures to the next world. Now, I know of some pharaohs that went through all kind of efforts to build these magnificent structures underneath which they went to their grave with their treasures with them. And you know what? People even got in there. Better friends to be rich toward God, not just to invest in holding on to all of it, but to invest some of that in the kingdom. Jesus talks about this, does he not? And then he goes on to conclude the point saying, you know, where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. And I'd like to speak to that for a moment. Uh, I think that by understanding some of the original language and the original culture, that expression, which you've probably heard, will make just a little more sense. Talk about the heart, where your heart is. You know, today, if you have a heart problem, you'll go to a, quote, cardiologist, someone who specializes in the heart, cardiology. The word cardo is, is a heart term, and it speaks of Main Street in old cities. You know, the cardo was the main street that went through town, and that's where everyone had their shops. It's where all the business was transacted. So in the cardo, that's where you found the money. The money was in the city, and the money was at the cardo, and people went there. So where your treasure is, that's where your cardo was. Jesus says, you know, where our treasure is, that's where our heart is. And a way to find out about what someone's heart's all about, just look and see to the extent you can what they do with this little thing called money. Pray tell, do we want to hoard it and hold it ever so close? Or do we want to be gracious? Do we want to be kindly disposed to love other people, to advance the Lord's work? Listen to me in this. If you're willing to let go of some money to advance the Lord's work, you're going to find the Lord bringing some more money back in. Our resource this week, the Hebrew Names of God cards. This collection includes 12 vibrant, high-quality art cards, each with Old and New Testament connections on the back, with scripture and beautifully written devotionals. These art cards can be used for personal reflection, group discussion, or as a beautiful gift for your friend or pastor. For this resource and more, call 1-800-WONDERS or visit us at loveit.com. For many, a trip to the Holy Land is the dream of a lifetime. The Bible truly comes alive as you see the sites where so many biblical events happened. Come on a Zola tour to see Israel and Petra. See the land of the Bible for yourself. Contact us to reserve your dream of a lifetime. I had a pastor friend this week contact me and he said, I really want to go to Israel with you folks, but I'm afraid financially that I'm not going to be able to make it. And I told him, if he's supposed to go, God will help direct him and the funds will happen. We would love for you to join us on a tour to the Galilee where you've seen some great footage of this program. You can find all the information on levitt.com. It, it's in the Galilee. That's been the backdrop for this whole series. But after Galilee and in Tiberias, we go to Jerusalem. Yes. We go to the holy city, <laughs> the city where the Lord himself will reign for a thousand years. The tours are incredible. We will save a seat on the bus for you. Now let's go back to the beautiful Galilee to hear more on the Beatitudes. Menorat aguf yain. Lepichach imencha tova. כל גופך יור, ממנך רעה, כל גופך יקרה. For some, it's been a good day at sea. Not so for others. It's in times like these, the Lord says, that one's light can pierce the prevailing darkness. The image is clear. Barren nets. 
empty baskets. Despondent friends. If therefore your eye is good, your whole body will be full of light. If you're like me, you just don't really like stingy people. Um, they frustrate me personally. God knows I really don't want to be that way. Better it is to be sharing and caring. Uh, we know that to be the case. Uh, and we know as well that just not everybody's like that. There's a uh, Hebrew expression called ayin ra'a, an evil eye, which interestingly harks to being stingy. They look at others and just don't care. Conversely, there's the expression ayin tova, which means a good eye. Yeshua, Jesus, is employing this uh, Hebrew expression here in the Matean Gospel. In uh, Matthew chapter 6, he speaks of something that's unintelligible, unintelligible apart from understanding the Hebrew background. He says, and I quote, the lamp of the body is the eye in verse 22, and in verse 23 he says, and if the eye is bad, then you know that whole body is going to be full of darkness. The point here, if you have an evil eye, an eye and ra eye, an evil eye, then if you're stingy, it's just going to affect you throughout, not just in the way you dispense your monies. That this is a, a Jewish expression, a Hebrew expression, is noted in the book of Proverbs, and, and Yeshua is harking back to this. In chapter 22, verse 9, he says, and I quote, He who has a generous eye will be blessed, for he gives his bread to the poor. In other words, you see someone in need and you want to respond to it. The Lord says, if we're that way, you perhaps heard the expression, he, uh, uh, we do well to, to share our bread with the hungry. We do well to be responsive to needs round about, to people round about. Not everyone's like that. Some people are just selfish to the core and they hurt other people by their indifference. It should not be so among us. When Yeshua instructs disciples for what it is to be Christian, hear me, it's not just about creeds, it's about deeds. It's about doing good in the world. It's about being kindly disposed. It's about caring and sharing. And if we're generous, we give to the poor, we help others, we tithe, we give offerings. If our eye is good, our whole body will be full of light because we're caring and sharing and that lovingness about us draws others into that vortex, into that way of being. And we're just a delight to be around because we're caring, sharing people. Conversely, if we're not, if we're just Mr. and Mrs. Scrooge, you know, it's just all about coveting my money, it's all about me and my stuff. If I understand the Lord correctly, that's like our eye uh, being dark we're blind and it imposes a kind of darkness in the body. You've ever heard the expression lighten up or let the sun shine in? Uh, from the uh, 70s there's an old song, let the sun shine in. Listen, from Yeshua's perspective, from Jesus' perspective, let the sun shine in. Have an eye that's full of light. See what's happening in the world around you. Be open, be gracious, be caring and sharing and you're gonna find as you look out for others, as you're loving toward others, Jesus says that you'll get it back in return, 30-fold, 60-fold, and 100-fold, and you're gonna see, because you have an eye and tova, a good eye, your body's gonna be full of light and blessing, you're gonna be a blessing, and you are going to be blessed yourself. We have three grandkids, don't we, together? We do. Very fun. We have Landon, he's 12, Bella Rose is two and a half, and the baby is Ty David. But our two and a half year old with our son Tyler will learn some of the basic things that Jeff has been teaching today. And our son Tyler in particular will say to Bella, he'll say, sharing is, and Bella says, caring. Even a two and a half year old knows what you taught today. It's simple, it's basic, way of living. Listen, I think if we would just follow what our parents told us uh, in nursery school, and our nursery school and kindergarten teachers taught us, that would be a good key to success in life right there. It makes us proud grandparents or parents with our kids 
to get some of the, but, but you're really taught, Jesus was teaching some basic human things that unfortunately some of us just don't get. To no. share and mm. to be nice to each other and to be kind, things like that. Yes, and the, the kindness opens up heaven's door in ways that greed pushes away because God is kind, he's compassionate, revealed as such in the Older Testament, incarnated as such in the New in the person of Jesus. And when we're caring and sharing, uh, we, uh, we have a way of opening up blessings into our own lives that wouldn't otherwise be there. Now, there's different ways to do that. We want to make sure that we do do that. And by the way, having said that, if you would be gracious and kindly disposed to sow uh, an investment in this ministry, I believe God would bless you for it in as much as he's blessed me and us for caring and sharing and investing in the kingdom. When I ask for an offering, I don't, it's not that I don't put into the plate. I endeavor to be a giver with tithes and offerings. And I found that, uh, that it's better to be a blessing than it is to be blessed. And uh, we do good to care to share. You also taught on the principle, and this is very interesting, I love this, that the lamp, or that, that the eye is the lamp of the body. Mm. And I've looked up scientific research on that also, and doctors can look at someone's eyes to see if they're healthy or not. It's just fascinating, and our uh, oldest daughter-in-law, both of our girls, but our oldest daughter-in-law, I always say, you have the most sparkly eyes. And I said, she has God eyes. And I see what comes out of her. It's just very interesting for Jesus to teach that. He created our bodies. He created the eye, and you can read so much of a person if they're sharing and caring. To that point, you know, you see some of these magazines, these models on Vogue or whatever, they look like death warmed over. Nice figures, nice clothing, but the eyes are scary to death, mm -hmm. you know. It's, uh, um, no countenance to speak of, but there's a kind of radiance with, with a God radiance. It's in the eyes. Good point. You can tell. Yeah. But I love that he taught that he created the eyes, and he created that we can tell that. I just, I don't know. Great yeah. teaching. It's so a, practical. Well, thank you. All about humility what you're teaching today, much more to come, stay with us. Our resource this week, the Hebrew Names of God cards. This collection includes 12 vibrant high quality art cards, each with Old and New Testament connections on the back with scripture and beautifully written devotionals. These art cards can be used for personal reflection, group discussion, or as a beautiful gift for your friend or pastor. For this resource and more, call 1-800-WONDERS or visit us at levitt.com. If you only watch us on television, you are missing additional content available only on our social media sites, Facebook, YouTube, and Twitter. You can always visit our website, which is home base for all of our ministry activities and information. There you can sign up for our free monthly newsletter, watch the TV program, or visit the online store. Join us as we tour Israel and Petra. Please contact us for more information. We would love to hear from you. There's not a whole lot out there today that is free for you. The Levitt Letter is free for you. Kirsten, you write every I month. I in do. The and I write letter. an article every month. Dave, you and I answer viewers' mail. Mm -hmm. there, there's a crossword puzzle yes. in every Levitt Letter and a personal letter. Here's the thing. It's free for you to receive. But it costs us money. It costs the ministry money to send out. We have some wonderful people that say, you know what? I would love to buy some love letters to send to people. A lot of prisoners mm -hmm. receive our publications. And if that's laid on your heart to help other people receive this wonderful periodical, the love letter with great information about Israel, uh, if the Lord lays it on your heart, get in touch with the ministry and we'll get you to the right person. You know, it reminds me, salvation is free, but still someone had to pay for it. There's always oh, wow. a price. And um, the, the, the magazine, if people like the program on, on Jewish views, then if you like that, the magazine, it's, it, it's like, uh, it, it's a news magazine with dozens and dozens of dozens of articles, cartoons, things for and about Israel, the Middle East, Bible prophecy, the news behind the news, and it's free. Of course, we print it and send it, uh, and those that donate help uh, take care of all that, but we're all about getting the good news through the eyes of the Jews out to use, and so thank you for helping us. Dramatic reenactments, your teaching in Israel, not free. No, 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 we no. Need, we need help. And, and that's the distinguishing characteristics of the program. It's not just the pontificating from a minister. 
Uh, it's the dramatic reenactments. And we, write, we like to give value added to what we do. And if you find value in what we do, please help us do it. And we'd appreciate it. We have more next week to come. And we appreciate everything that you do for this ministry and your wisdom and your insight. And we're just thankful to be with you. You're right. kind. We end today's program with a song from our founder, Zola Levitt. But first, as we say in Hebrew, Sha'alu Shalom Yerushalayim. Pray for the peace of Jerusalem. For the holy city of Jerusalem, we will pray for peace, shalom, shalom. On the holy mountain in Jerusalem, take thy son, my son, my only son. Slay him there and show me in Jerusalem of thy faith, thy faith that God is one. Oh my God, my only but ask of me, and it is done. For in thy mercy, for in thy name, I know for me you'll do the same. On the holy mountain in Jerusalem, take thy son, thy son, thy only son, slay him there. Join us right now for additional content that is only available on our social media sites, Facebook, YouTube, and Twitter. Visit our website, levitt.com, for the current and past programs, the television schedule, tour information, and our free monthly newsletter, which is full of insightful articles and news commentary. View it online, or we can ship it directly to your mailbox every month. Also on our website is the online store, there, you can order this week's resource, or you can always give us a call at 1-800-WONDERS. Your donations to Our Jewish Roots help us to support these organizations as they bless Israel. Please remember we depend on tax-deductible donations from viewers like you.